modern science is fucking fighting for us. There are millions, millions of people that have dedicated their lives to working on treatment and cures for us. Today, we're gonna cover chronic illness, what fears we have, and solutions. Worrying about losing our jobs, if you haven't already lost your job. Okay, and now with my illness, um, arthritis from year zero of year of diagnosis, by year five, most people are out of work. Um, I'm coming up to year 14 and I'm still in work, but it's not gonna last. I have a degenerative disease. Most of us with chronic illness, I think it is, we do have degenerative diseases. Worrying about losing our jobs is a valid fear. We, yes, look, we're going to lose our jobs. Society is not, st I live in the UK and, sorry, we're not ready. For, you can see I'm really professional. Um, we're not ready for fully supporting the disabled community in full-time employment or part-time employment. The good news is things are changing, right? Give it another five to ten years and there'll be a lot more flexible working, a lot more working from home. Yes, it's it's pretty shit now, it's a work in progress, but it's going to get better. And with things like YouTube, I mean, look at me, like I know I'm going to lose my job. I know, I know it because I'm already pretty fucked up. There's another vlog on that. but. There's different career options for us. Might not be what you thought you were gonna be doing, but there's different career options. So worrying about losing your job, you we fucking should be, because let's face it, we're all struggling with pain and fatigue. We're not gonna be able to stay in employment the way we're, you know, expected to. We're probably not gonna make it to retirement age. And dealing with chronic illness is a fucking full-time job. I'm constantly, afraid of being a failure. Well, I'm not constantly afraid of it. I'm constantly a fucking failure. Oh, fuck, it's shit, isn't it? I fail to get dressed. I fail to get out of bed. I fail to socialize. I fail at fucking everything. Everything I fail at. I fail at being able to walk upstairs. I fail at being able to cook myself a meal. Um, and when I've said it like that, I feel like shit. I don't normally view it like that. It took me years to stop viewing it like that. You've got to turn it in your head. This is critical. Now, today, yes, admittedly, it was at one in the morning. I got out of bed. I got out of bed. I got dressed, because I'm fucking fit. I'm like so athletic, I got dressed. It's turning it into a positive. So you must, you must, and I don't like it when people point, but I'm like, you must, you, you, you must turn it into a positive. Not what you can't do, not what you haven't been able to do, but what you have done. And if you need to, you need to write that shit down to get it in your head until your culture changes that you focus on the positives. And you need to, for your own mental health, focus on the positives. Another big one is people not getting it, worrying that people don't get it, that they think we're lazy, they're like, get better soon. And you're like, I'm not gonna get better soon. I, I suffer from chronic illness. There's no cure. I spent over a decade, it massively negatively impacted my mental health because I desperately wanted at least my family to get it. And I've had really shit reality checks that 14 years in, 12 years in, here's your example, right? 12 years in, I had a reaction to some treatment during a major flare up. I was bedridden for three months sleep, asleep right, sleeping 22 hour blocks. When I started to wake up, I was still bedridden. I didn't have enough energy to um, put socks on. You know, my mum had to come and care. You know, I didn't wash for weeks. I didn't have the energy. To be honest, now that we've agreed, looking back on it, I needed to be admitted to hospital. When I was coming out of it, and it took me months, I was off work for seven months in total. A family member that had been in the house and seen how sick I was, turned around to my mum and said, you need to leave. You're waiting on her hand and foot while she's just lying in bed. It hurts to this day. That's years now. And it takes my breath away that a family member that's known me all their life just thought I was just lying there, letting my mum wait on me hand and foot, because I couldn't be bothered. 
and that they were trying to encourage my mum to leave me. If she'd have left, I would have had no choice but to do an ambulance call because I would have tried to look after myself and it wouldn't have worked. I mean, I would have contacted the GP. Like, no, I wouldn't have done an ambulance call because I wasn't dying. But I would have had to contact my GP and for uh, help, help, I need help. How, how could my loved one not see that I was fucked, fucked. And I actually had to speak to my specialist about it because I, f I think it's not healthy for us to constantly trying to get people to get it, to desperately wanting people to understand so that they can not show sympathy, show empathy. Um, I think if you're trying to get your family and friends to understand, stop. Just stop. Just accept and be happy for them that they don't get it. Just, just accept they don't get it. There are millions of us, millions around the world that f***ing get it. What we need is to like do things like this. There needs to be more of us on YouTube in a positive manner. Not, not the, oh, I'm disabled, the world's ended. Oh, my life's so bad, it's terrible, poor me. Not that shit, because negativity, we don't need to be around negativity. Don't waste what little energy you've got on desperately trying to make your family understand, because they're not gonna get it. Just accept that, be happy for them, and hope that they never have to understand what we're going through, okay? And I'm sorry, I am genuinely sorry that that's my answer to this fear. We're, we're going to die. We're humans. We're going to die. We're not vampires. Or they wouldn't be that... Oh my God, wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing if the whole uh, true blood thing was right? That vampire blood f made you well? Like, I would, I would do some scary things to be well. Um, and that's why we're a vulnerable group. Um, but it's current, as far as I'm aware, um, there aren't any vampires, so we're, we're, we're going to die. There's no f***ing point in spending your life worried about it. It's going to happen, but that means that we're supposed to make the most of everything. That means we're supposed to do things that we enjoy. Most of us with chronic illness, we have degenerative diseases that we're going to decline. But, major positive here. So, I work with my specialist, um, who's f***ing awesome, um, and present to um, doctors, scientists, professors, uh, pharma, about what it's like being a patient. It changed my mental health. Being in a room with hundreds of people that have spent their whole lives studying and working to gain experience, to come up with solutions for us, the patients, um, they are going to figure it out. Like, you think about COVID, like how, sorry, we've never, in the history of humans, managed to discover, an, discover a disease and get a vaccine so quickly. Look at what they did. Like, modern science is, is it used to progress in years, now it's days, weeks, months, which means every five years, our treatment is gonna completely change because modern science is progressing so fast. So what our future looks like right now, like, I probably view my future very different to how many of you do, because I know in five years time, treatment's gonna completely change. So as my disease is declining, so my disease is doing this, but treatment is doing this, which means I'm gonna be somewhere in the middle. Modern science is fucking fighting for us. There are millions, millions of people that have dedicated their lives to working on treatment and cures for us. You can do what I do and speak to your specialist. It's gonna get better. It's going to get better. This is a difficult one because there's no way around it. Suffering from chronic illness is isolating. It's, it's shit, isn't it? Like, it's shit. No one would choose to be in the situation we're in. I've got a vlog on hacks for dealing with chronic illness. Okay, I'm gonna put a link. Um, look at that because yes, it's isolating, but are we alone? Of course we're fucking not. There are millions of us, millions of us. And with the internet these days, you don't have to be alone. Join groups, fuck 
you're on YouTube, get on YouTube. Unconditional love. If you're single and living on your own, get a cat. If, you've, if you're well enough for a dog, get a dog. You being on your own, on your own, with no unconditional love, f that shit. My mental health wouldn't survive it. It wouldn't survive it. Unconditional love is important. If you're worried about being single forever, well, f***ing so do all the able-bodied people. Like, we, we constantly worry about that, don't we? If you get out and socialise, great. Get chat groups. Do something about it. You're not gonna meet someone if you're not socialising. And socialise online. And just because we're disabled, we're not f***ing dead. We're not gonna be single forever. Give yourself a bit of a bitch slap. But, it's like, I'm like, give yourself a bitch slap, but this isolation, it's brutal. It's, it's brutal. Very rarely do I feel lonely because I make, I've made my home into my safe, place of safety. It's warm, it's cosy, it's, I've got everything I need. And I don't feel lonely, like Kevin Hart, like he's a mate of mine as far as I'm concerned. Like never met him, never gonna meet him. Um, unless I become a major YouTube sensation and there's some reason why we need to link, but I'm thinking probably not. But you know where like you watch a series, like Friends or The Big Bang Theory, and okay, this might, some people might be like, this sounds so sad, but is it just me where you feel part of the community? I love Sheldon and I care about his life and I know he's a character, but I feel part of the community. So I don't feel alone because I can join the Big Bang Theory group or I can watch Friends. Am I, is that sad? I, that's normal, isn't it? That's normal. Can, please, for fuck's sake, comment below and let me know. I think this needs to be a whole separate vlog, doesn't it? I'm in the UK, I'm lucky. There are benefits available. Um, if you're not in the UK or you're not in a country with benefits, like, my heart goes out to you. Like, how the fuck? what the fuck? Like, com comment below and link with me. I'd love to actually interview someone like to learn about, for example, India. How the f do you survive? Like, it's, a, it's like, I would love to interview someone. So comment below if, if you would be up for that. Get your costs down, especially in the first world. Um, I don't, look, I don't care if that's politically correct or not. It, you understand what I mean, right? We spend too much money on shit we don't need. Look at the benefits that are available. I am gonna do vlogs on it. Um, so keep, keep an eye on the channel, um, especially Pip personal independent payment and I'm sorry but it's going to be obviously because I'm in the UK it's going to be UK based start researching about passive income and get on it because you can do it from your bed it's f***ing scary going out if you have to if you're still using public transport f***ing high five double high five I don't know how you do it I couldn't do it how many of you trip on air because like it's, I know it's not just me like you literally we trip on air let alone fucking pavements and you know uneven flooring just a bit of air and i'm like fuck gone right so yes it's scary going out i agree the, these these articles about people with chronic illness have anxiety going out of course we can do we're a walking hazard and we run out of energy like the amount of times where i've i've had to i've f***ed up energy levels and i've had to call for help and i've had to leave my car unlocked well, I've gone to sleep in the car and get rescued. It's shit. It sucks. And the only reason why I was able to do that is because I work in transport. So I had people out in vehicles in the area that I crashed and that happened more than once. It's a bit of a bitch slap. Try and avoid that from happening. Be better than me. Like don't have to get rescued because you're asleep somewhere. My solution is plan the arse out of it. Plan the fucking arse out of it. And if you're worried, if you're sort of feeling Actually, I don't think I'm good enough for this. Delay it. Delay it. Protect yourself. Delay it. Worried about being a burden? Yes. I worry about it all the time. I feel like a burden. And I'm pretty sure we're all in agreement on that. We need to work on this. I think I need to do more vlogs on it because I haven't figured this shit out. I try desperately to be as independent as possible, to make change, to be the least amount of burden as possible on anyone and I'll do vlogs on how to maintain independence. I think why it's so difficult is because at some point we are going to be a burden. We need, we're going to need care. 
if you're not, if, if you don't really have it, a way to do this is when I've had carers, sometimes they're relieved to come here because it's a pleasure. That's the, that's been the word that multiple carers have said. It's a pleasure. I'm hap genuinely happy to see them. Um, and there are times where obviously I'm asleep or I'm so fatigued and in so much pain, I don't have the energy to talk or smile. You, like Smiling takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? You know, when you <laughs> smiling's challenging. But I think by being a good person, and by showing interest, if you're physically well enough to do that, um, you can brighten someone's day. You, we don't have to be a burden in that set. You know, it, it's been, for me, being a burden is when people and they don't want to help and they're like, fuck's sake, I've got to do this for her now, fucking hell. Um, if someone, if you can make someone smile and show that you care. You're not a burden, I don't think. Comment below on that one. When I say we need to do a vlog on this, I really want us to be a community. Well, we are a f***ing community, aren't we? If, if, if you're watching this, we're a community, as far as I'm concerned. And I'll take feedback and do vlogs based on suggestions. And I'm pretty sure that when I'm talking shit, some of you are gonna tell me. I mean for us to do vlogs. I desperately want this channel to be a community and I don't wanna be lonely. I have a friend who's, she's, I think she's 22. She's got loads of illnesses. She's like an impressive list. Um, she's in a wheelchair and since I've been talking to her, oh my God, it's made such a difference. Such a difference. Just when you're worried about something or you're feeling like shit and you have the conversation and someone says, I know, isn't that annoying? And you're like, mind blown. Someone gets it. She f***ing gets it. Um, or when you're being, when your pain's up and your fatigue's up and you're being more emotional. You know when it sort of gets away with you and you're not being realistic with yourself. You're putting yourself down when you shouldn't. That's what that friendship is amazing for. And that's what I want from this community. Positive, a positive community. Thank you so much for watching. And I will definitely be going through the comments on this one. Take care of yourselves and remember you are not alone. You are not alone. There's f***ing millions of us.